What's up, y'all? It's Dakota. Quincy's uh, sitting behind you. You can't see him, but we're just sitting here today getting uh, <coughs> rods and stuff rigged up for a summer pattern. It's kind of our first outing in just two weeks. It's a little minute. Three weeks. Uh, but the fishing is going to get, I don't know, it's going to get good. <laughs> Summertime fishing is one of those times where you can find a hump, find a drop off, find a ledge and really lay into some bass. Um, the lake we're going to specifically in the morning is a lake that has everything, has everything a guy could look at, points, ledges, dumps, brush piles, all the structure. So we're kind of gearing up for that. And uh, I just kind of want to show you guys how I run my summer patterns. And you ever hear people talking about people bass fishing um, summer patterns? You always hear people saying, oh, I caught two bass on a crankbait, this is the time of year they do that. I mean, they're so they're so bunched up and their metabolisms are so high right now, they're trying to get back to that weight they had before they went and spawned. Um, so they're eating anything and everything. Big, big lures right now. Big worms, big crankbaits. Um, I mean, just, if you've got a, you run an 8-inch worm, usually throw a 10, 12-inch worm on right now. I mean, you'll, you'll be amazed what two-pound bass will eat. I mean, you'll get into a mess of them right now. So here's some of the stuff I run. Um, kind of a year-round tactic and even more deadly in the summertime is a Carolina rig. I've got a small worm on it for when I was fishing the lake that's pretty touchy. I probably will put a different worm on this in the morning. But I use a 7-2 heavy skeet reef rod with a fast tip. Um, and I got a pretty low gear ratio reel on it only because it's the only reel I got for the rod. It's an old chewer PT on them. And we lubed this thing up, and she is rough. Still back to about 60%. So it's a good, I mean, you can see the knobs are all wore out. She's seen a couple of fish in her day, but she still works. One of these days we'll get her switched out. I do like those skeet reef rods. I think Quincy will test. We have a few of them. Yeah, there's three on the boat there's right three now. On the boat, and there ain't never been a problem with any three of them. For a $50 Walmart rod, we've talked about them before, but. Yeah, guys. A great rod. Anyway, another thing I always carry and always have tied on the square bill, and this could change tomorrow depending on how I feel. I like running deep diving crankbaits in the spring or pre spawn, but post spawn they're so grouped up that I don't like running crankbaits through that group because it pulls them, it separates that group, and then they start getting scattered as my dog's walking in. <laughs> anyway, so you pull the fish off the, their group, so that's why I like throwing plastics in. But a square bill where we're going tomorrow. Oh boy, I tell you, she hooked some good. Quincy had a. Remember that night we told you Quincy lost a giant? This is the same way. It's got a lot of trees, a lot of stumps. And something about that square bill coming across, smacking them, get them agitated. Also, that's like I said, are on high metabolism. Oh, by the way, my cranking rod, Super KBD, uh, I think it's a 6.6. Six. 7.4. Oh my god, a 7.4. Would you look? My other one was a 6.6. Six. Um, 74 tour K KVD power launcher is what it's called. It's a quantum rod. Um, it's just got this soft tip. It's like, it's like a medium heavy, but like an extra fast. Tip. Yeah, and it's uh, it's super slick. You can swing any kind of crankbait, and especially oh, a wow. lipless. You can yeah. whip a lipless out there. Anyway, my favorite cranking rod, and on my cranking rod, I put a big <clears throat> big reel. It's in 300 series quantum. Um, like a lot of 12 pound line on it. It's like a musky reel for it. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, they're high metabolism. They're feeding on shad heavily right now. You'll see now where you'll see big balls of shad, not even just on your on your um, depth finders, but you'll see them physically on the on the top of the water. You'll see just big groups of shad. So I throw a, a belly weighted swim bait or any kind of swim bait. Um, I got that on my favorite white bird. Paired up with an old quantum 6.3. I mean, you can you can really control the speed on these pretty well, so you don't need a <clears throat> real fast reel. Um, so back to my worm talking. This is a 10-inch bull bull worm by KVD. Um, it's a big, heavy, thicker profile worm. I got it on a 5 aught or 6 aught 6 aught Yamagatsu with a tungsten 3.8. And this is a new rod I picked up. Well, 
Chelsea picked up. Whoa! Yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah. Peg Blake's always got to have it. Anyway, I got a <clears throat> Ducket Ghost. It was on sale. Uh, half off. Quincy called me and said, hey, man, you've been wanting to duck it. And we got that $100 Ghost down to 50 bucks. So Chelsea and I went and bought it. <clears throat> While I was there, you know, I'm like, oh, let's see what they got for real. They had a Cas Casitas Shimano. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at pronouncing that. And it's a hundred dollar real blade as well, and they had it knocked down at seventy five bucks. So I've got one hundred and thirty dollars wrapped up in this rod, and it probably would range it two hundred um, MSRP. So I like it. I've used it a couple times. It's a good little rod and reel. Anyway, I got the ten inch worm on that one. Seventeen pound uh, fluoro for most of this, except for the cranking, and except for the Carolina rig, it's got twenty pound fluoro. Always got to have a Cinco. I do a little <clears throat> different. I put the weight at the bottom. We did that at Ford. Yep. It's pretty cool. We'll see how that goes tomorrow. That's on a Fenwick Elite Tech 7 foot. No, 6'9. Um, heavy rod. And then my big Ned rig. Quincy loves this thing. Um, I love it actually. It's, it's a, a big Ned rig though. It is a big Ned rig. Yeah, it is. It's what it is. I mean, you probably have seen it. I found it on YouTube watching, but it's a jig head, you know, a <coughs> weedless jig head. Football. Yeah, football and, uh, you take a Senko, you bite her down just above the old, uh, do you know what they call that on the Senko? So you know what I'm talking about, the little gap, whatever. And uh, you throw it up on there, and uh, it catches numbers of fish. I got that on my Veritas, paired up with my Quantum TT. Uh, smoke. Smoke. Great reel. One of my favorites. Fast. Fast reel. <clears throat> okay, and then, like I said, Shad, you got to have a spinnerbait tied on. I just tied this on, actually, and I got that on my... Ski Reese with my Abu Black Max. Yes, you see it on the skier. There are how many of these on the skier? There's two of them. There's two I got on one. You got one. Um, these reels are just. You want a reel to learn on? Yeah. Go buy one. For 50 bucks, it's hard to beat. So, what, you got $100 right here? There you go. There's a $100 setup, and I have fish. It gets babies now that I've got this setup, but she used to get used a lot more than what she does now. But I always like, she's always on the boat. It's kind of what we run. I don't know exactly what Quincy, all right, Quincy, what, what are you going to put on tomorrow? Jig. Uh, we'll have it, everybody's got a jig. Jig. Um, I got a drop shot on. Drop shot. Uh, I got, oh, there's a Senko over there somewhere. Yeah. Um, there's square bill. Yeah. Um, you got a walk water. I got a walk walking bait. Yeah, top water. Guys, don't forget. They are hitting Chad hard. Right, come in. Quincy, yeah, Quincy can show you what he's got on there. Pinch hitter. Coming in. Pinch hitter. And, uh, I don't know, this is, uh, it's more of a transparent color, and I guess it's better for, I think, early morning kind of stuff. Later in the day, you kind of want to run. You know, I'm not dropping in on your subject. No, you're good. Go for it. You said early morning. Yep. Totally agree. But what I, I don't know, a lot of people have found is it, a top water bite will heat up as the sun comes up too, because that really positions fish. As the sun's coming up, you start finding shade pockets, you start yeah, finding cover. cooler water yeah. situation, where maybe the surface isn't as hot over here, and that, and there's something. Usually, when you get a top water bite, that fish was guarding fry from the hatch from from spawning, or, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're eating shad or they're guarding fry, one or the other, and that's a great way to catch fish in the morning, afternoon. Right before dark, it's a great dock, especially. You wear fish out on them with the, on the dock. But. Yeah, well, this is like a well, probably three inch. It's a little bit smaller bait presentation. I know Hedden makes a rattle snook that's like five or six inches. So yeah, Strike really? king. Yeah, and that's I got one. It's going to Canada. But, oh, okay. um, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's just going to Canada. Though. Yeah, that's what that's what that rod got kind of done up the way it is for. What did you have done to it? Well, the epoxy was teeing on the third guy from the top and Did you get it down then? yeah Marshall got it fixed it's always good if you guys don't have a buddy that does rod repairs it's good especially on stuff like that that doesn't take any time or money really and you just drop it off to him and he does it and then just bring it back to work the next day um it's always good to have buddies yeah especially when you fish and you're hard on stuff like we are that's fixed up I mean I broke more freaking rods I bro okay guys here we go I tell you I broke a rod when? You weren't on the boat, it was me and Chelsea. 
No, so I didn't I've had it. a Veritas. You broke one of Veritas? 2.0 since they originally came out. You broke the OG Veritas. The OG. I set a hook on a bag. That's bat. a 1.0, ain't it? Oh, these are 2.0. They I know that. I had a 2.0. Okay. And it uh, it snapped, right? I had two of these, now I have one. It snapped. Really? Yeah, I threw it in the water. That, that's crystal. Did you get your reel off there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Put it on the white bird. Big, but big, big fish? I don't know. Never got the hook. That, I mean, I, I just reeled it in and it was nothing. This is the saddest moment. I've never actually... On a hook set, I broke rods, guys. But on a hook set, that rod had been through the burner, too. I got done with it and I looked down where the real seat was, dude. That rod was. Yeah. And it wasn't tough, it was an eight year, nine year old, ten year old rod. I don't remember yeah. how old it was. Super cool little rod. You guys don't like them. I, it kind of broke my heart because I always talk these rods up after I use them for the first time. No, I like it. I got, I've got two. You know, <laughs> I've got, I had two, now I got, I, got I had three, now I two. I just got the same one. Alright, um, another thing <clears throat> on big lures, big, uh, throw on the back of the Carolina rig. It's a big creature. Big rig. creature, brush hog, lizard. This is a yum, watermelon flake, you know, Magnum Christie critter. You can show them that. That is a deadly, and you can Texas rig it, you can tag it, or whatever you want to do, but Carolina especially. Um, another great bait. These are these are hard to come by anymore. They're iguana, makes them uh, striking iguana, and mm -hmm. it's a ten inch. This one's just a green. I don't even know what you want to call it. Called a watermelon green. These are sweet. It's just hard to find. I think I have two bags left. Oh, buddy. Big guy. Yeah, these guys mean business when they come oh. through the water. It's like a bright green pumpkin is what it is. Yeah, it's a watermelon. It says it right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're giant. Yeah, it's a big fat. The ones I got are, they're almost like jointed. Like, well, anyway, before we get too much into this, we just want to show you. I mean, I've got a few more rods I ain't rigged up yet, I ain't decided. But those, a worm, a big worm, a jig, a crankbait, and maybe a swim bait will be your... I'm going to guarantee you tomorrow 90% of our fish are going to come off of either a big worm, a jig, or a crankbait. There you go. There's my secrets. I don't got many of them. This lake we're going to tomorrow is not no baby lake. It's not no, hopefully we catch a two pound bass tomorrow. No, it's hopefully we catch an eight pound bass. So, every time we go out, this a goal, but it is legitimately can be done. At that place, it's a goal. I went back and watched that film too. Get in my hands right here and the fish popped off. So no. Okay. We're going back there, guys. I'll give you the throwdown. It was oh. in Maryville, Missouri. I mean it's just Name you, gotta drop give, it. you gotta give these guys what they want. They wanna know where these fish are at. Guys, it's a great public like um it's well managed. Um there's there's tournaments ran on it, but they only allow twenty five boats a tournament. Which is good. It's not a giant lake. It's they do do a lot of tournaments. But they fish, I bet there's one of them off. So, we'll see. Um, we'll shut this down. We're going to finish rigging rods up. Once you guys see, you got to get ready. i got to get the last couple ready. So. We're bringing the whole fleet out tomorrow. So, stay tuned. We'll be back on. Actually, we'll, we'll do a whole boat launch for you. You can see the boat going on the water. They'll keep, 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 keep. Yeah. Yeah. We out.